Assalamualaikum, we meet again uh, This is a lecture for MIT 423 uh, Week 8, part 2 We still talking about complement fixation test So, the first thing we need to talk about is the principle behind the procedure of complement fixation test So, this is the first step in performing complement fixation test There are a few antigens uh, needed uh, a few reagents needed for performing the CFT so first we look on the antigen the first uh, reagent that is needed this antigen um, represent the kind of uh, pathogen that we are looking for in the patient so for example if uh, the patient is being suspected uh, suffering from syphilis inf uh, infection by trypanoma pallidum so we need to have the organism of trypanoma pallidum itself as an antigen that means we need to breed or get the uh, organism second the complement so this complement is uh, usually harvested from guinea pig and these two will be added to the patient serum if the patient uh, with infection of course it will contain the antibody against the antigen It is important to note that the patient serum was previously heated at 56 degrees for around 30 minutes. This is to degenerate the uh, existing complement from the patient because we don't want the, uh, the existing complements. Complements is going to be there in uh, patient blood. We are going to use our own complement, which is uh, being uh, collected from guinea pigs. And then the antibody will react with the antigen to form antigen antibody complex. So the antigen antibody complex will activate the classical pathway where the complement will bind or fix to the FC region of the activated antibodies we're talking about serum of patient with infection so of course the serum will contain the antibody if we look over here the same thing the same procedure the same reagents the antigen of the pathogens that we intend to investigate plus complement our complement from the lab not the patient complements the patient complements supposed to be gone because they are already treated at 56 degree so no complement here but if the patient is without infection to the antigen that we are looking for there will there will be no antibodies against it no antibody against the antigen so no antigen antibody complex no antigen antibody complex because there is no antibody this uh, will lead to no complement fixation the complement that we added earlier will be still freely available And then for the second step, this is the indicator stage where we will put another reagents. First is the ship RBC and antibody to ship RBC. As uh, we observe here, of course the antibody will 
attached to the ship RBC and form antigen antibody complex here. But no hemolysis happen because the complement is already tied up in the earlier antigen antibody reaction here. So this is a positive test for patient with infection. All available complement is fixed by the antigen antibody reaction. No hemolysis occur. So the test is positive for the presence of these antibodies, not the antibody to ship RBC. Step to the uh, to the side for the one without infection. We all know that without infection, the complement is uh, still uh, available because there is no antigen antibody complex formed earlier. Once we put the ship RBC and antibody to ship RBC, antigen antibody complex of the ship RBC will be formed and the complement will be fixed to that new antigen antibody complex. So we will start the classical pathway, eventually the lytic pathway, lead to hemolysis of the ship RBC. This because there is uncombined complement available. So this is a negative test. No antigen antibody reaction occurs, the complement remains and the red blood cells are lysed in the indicator stage so the test is negative hemolysis occurred negative no hemolysis means positive so again let's have a look on results and interpretation no hemolysis means positive test as you can observe here The ship RBC is, is still intact. As for hemolysis of RBCs, negative test. The uh, second, uh, the, the 2A is not very clear because uh, maybe the reaction is not finished uh, yet. But you can observe here, completely hemolyzed. No RBC can be observed. No RBC can be observed and the content has been released to the serum. Okay, the advantages of a complement fixation test. First, it can detect against a large number of bacterial, fungal and viral infections. They mean it can detect varieties, a lot of uh, many types of microorganisms infections and it is quite economical because uh, most of the reagents you can manually prepare for these advantages of CFT when compared to the uh, more modern uh, serological techniques such as ELISA or um, immunofluorescence uh, techniques safety is less sensitive and again compared to the more uh, modern and optimized method available nowadays because of uh, the manual uh, nature of CFT it is time consuming and labor intensive they mean a lot of uh, work need to be done the procedure before the procedure you need to prepare the reagent itself and you also need a lot of equipment thank you and have, have a nice day